I want to teach you how you can use the free Ahrefs Chrome extension to your benefit. Now, it's not a tool that everyone seems to know about, but it's free to everybody. You do not need to uh, pay for Ahrefs to be able to use it. So to demonstrate it, I just found a random keyword, Camping Disneyland Paris. And let's say when you're actually doing your outlining, you're gonna go and look at your competitors. So let's just say this is something I'm writing on. I wanna go look at my competitors. Let's go take a look. And I'll show you how this can help us. So we'll go to the first one, uh, Camping Direct. Now I will fully admit I've camped like twice in my life now um, and I've never been to Disneyland Paris. I don't really care about Disney. So I might not know everything here, but that doesn't really matter. So you can see it up here in my menu bar, our little A. Let's talk about what it shows us. First things first, it shows us the title that they've actually set for this page. So I can see, is it a good title? Is it different than what was on Google? It gives me their meta description, which is something that's really helpful to um, train ChatGPT. Have it write a few for you uh, if you don't want to write your own, because I mean, everyone hates writing these. Publish date, it doesn't show for every single site, but it's pretty good for most sites. This seems to be a page, not a post. It is better at doing it for a post. Then we have the word count. It does try to read only um, the section of the post, but it doesn't do it very well. So it reads the whole post, admittedly, and any comments, any sidebar stuff. Um, so if they have like massive comments, take this with a grain of salt. You're then also able to see their hierarchy at a glance. So some places don't have table of contents and even if they do, it often like weirdly collapses or uncollapses as you're trying to read it. This is a great way to just take a quick glance at it and see what you can do. Again, another option is take a bunch of competitors once, feed them into ChatGPT and have it create kind of a baseline outline for you based on everything your competitors had included. So that's gonna give us an idea of like what they're talking about in this post. And it also gives us an idea of the hierarchy. So you only want to have one H1 per post. I had a bunch of students realize that their theme accidentally was pulling multiple H1s. And so anything in their menu bar was an H1. So they had like 10 of them. Getting rid of it can really help your site structure and help Google figure out what the heck is going on. Because realistically, a book should only have one title. If it has 20 titles, you're gonna be confused as a user. Google feels the same way. You're also going to be able to see when it was modified to see if they've updated it. Now you won't know like how much work they did to it, but it can give you a rough idea of did something change here. Then for indexability, you can see if it is a um, syndicated piece of content, which would have the canonical URL pointing somewhere else. Typically syndicated content does not rank on Google, but mistakes happen. Google has even admitted that. So better to be careful and then you can see it here. These are also all ways you can test your own content. I do it as well for my own stuff, just in case. Um, so if I have set a canonical URL, I wanna make sure I did it properly. I can come here and see that it's meant to be pointing somewhere else. You can see their robots TXT and their sitemaps. Um, a lot of places tend to have multiple sitemaps. Like this one, you can see it's EN, Italian. Don't know what all these other ones necessarily are, so I'm gonna stop trying, <laughs> but uh, all for different languages. And here you can see their different languages in the, I don't know how to pronounce that, href langs, I guess, I'm not sure. Um, but that's gonna be that they have it set up for different languages rather than just auto letting Google translate it. For their structured data, you can see the type of schema that they are using on this post. Do they have video schema? Do they have FAQ schema? All that stuff, you're gonna be able to see here. So here I can see that they've used a list. I can also see that they've created, uh, it looks like it's might be custom, I'm not sure, or it might be a common thing for accommodation providers. I'm not super familiar, but we can see what it is here and learn from that. So if they have like 20 lists and they're ranking number one, that wouldn't really happen. But maybe you need 20 lists. I don't really look at this as much, but you can see what they have like preset for their social. Um, not super helpful, but again, something you might be able to train your AI on or just give you an idea of like what they're focusing on can be helpful. What I care more about are the images. So alt text is a hill I will die on every single time. You need good alt text to have 
good user experience beyond even Google, but so many people miss it. So you can see here, like their alt text is piss poor. Honestly, this is bad alt text, even when they've deigned to include it. So on your own site as well, especially if you're updating old content, you can click alt text missing and just see all the images on the page that do not have alt text. Same for title missing. I'll be honest, I, I think titles are less important. Um, I've heard they're more important for Google images instead of being important for uh, like actual SEO side of it for text. So not my forte, worth including for sure. I think every image should have a title and an alt just that way like anyone can know what it is. Um, and sometimes some programs, like I know Rank Math will do this, It'll auto, if you set it to auto insert alt text, it'll pull from the title. So important to have something. I would rather have alt text properly written, not just Disney or something, if that is the case. Then we have their HTTP header um, and just kind of like how it's structured. You can see a lot of extra details here. That's going to be a bit much, to be honest, but you can see like the date you accessed it, server, all sorts of interesting information that I don't know enough about. So I'm not going to go into it more. Another thing that I use are the outgoing links. If you are struggling to figure out something to link to, come here, hit external, and then see what they link to. So if your top 10 competitors all are linking to certain external sources, you should too. Like if everyone's linking to one thing, it's a good idea for you to link to it as well. And most content optimizers won't tell you that. Um, the one that's in Raptive, which to my knowledge is built on SEMrush, but I have not used it direct in SEMrush, so I'm not sure. It suggests uh, the things that at least two people have linked to. So this is a good way for you to find it for free. Super easy. You can also see their nofollow links, which should be um, anything that is an affiliate or sponsored. And that can be a good way if you're new to your niche to find affiliate links that they are linking to. And if you want to select internal, then you're going to be able to see any internal link on their site. Note that this does include their menu, so you have to scroll past that. Um, and typically what I look for is the first time that they use like kind of an uncapitalized sentence for me to figure out that it's in context inside of the body text. Now this is like kind of a booking listing, so we're not really going to see that, but in a blog post we would. And this can help you figure out like what are they linking to, maybe some other posts about the topic if it's a newer silo and they aren't ranking on their site that you might want to target as well. Um, or even just seeing the number of internal links they have. My rule of thumb is always 10 minimum, but maybe you want to do way more because you see that your competitor's doing more. And you can highlight them on the page to see actually which ones they are and where they are. Now, I don't really use any of these down here. You'd have to sign into Ahrefs to use them anyway, but I prefer to use Ahrefs inside of Ahrefs. Um, so for free use, this is how I use it, and I hope it really helps you. Um, it doesn't need to be, oh, and sorry, the metrics, you also have to be logged in. It doesn't need to be something that is like a massive thing that you like are necessarily always using, um, but I do find it very helpful when I am looking at competitors and trying to figure out how can I do better than them. Also, like I said, a very good place to find information to seed ChatGPT or whatever your AI writer of choice is um, with extra information or to just train it on examples because so often we don't see meta descriptions on the front end in an easy, clear way, um, and we can't be sure if the person wrote it or if Google wrote it. This is a great way just to get like a bunch of versions of a meta description and be like, here's an example of a good meta description. Now write one about, and then a completely different topic. Very easy to do. Um, you can also feed it all of the uh, headers of your competitors and feed it your outline that you've already made and say like, what am I missing that they included? and it'll tell you, and then you know the content gap you now need to fill. So here's uh, kind of the tip of the day, I guess, and I hope you guys enjoy it and that it helps you a ton with your content creation.